Good day everyone. Today, we will be discussing the introduction to nutrition in tropical aquaculture. So basically, this module will cover the discussions on how vital the fish nutrition as its role in aquaculture and in the food security as a whole. And uh, also, what are the essential nutrients that are beneficially giving benefits to our aquaculture species and uh, the effects of these um, nutrients in the aquatic environment. So as a form of introduction, um, allow me to show you the Sustainable Development Goals which of the United Nations. So basically, the aquaculture sector is anchored to these goals no? because in aquaculture, we are producing fish to meet the zero hunger goal of the United Nations. So that is the SDG number two. And number 12 is the responsible consumption of production. So we are not just producing fish, but we are also protecting the environment that, that these fish are being produced. No? And number 14 is life below water. So since we are dealing with aquaculture, meaning to say we are on the aquatic environment, so we must protect the life below water not just the aquatic organisms that we are culturing but also the other organisms including the non-living organisms that that are inhabiting the uh, below water environments so um, aquaculture in food security so since aquaculture has been considered to be one of the largest or the fastest growing sector in the food production sector uh, particularly in producing different types of uh, species, no? different aquaculture commodities. No? So fisheries basically is uh, the largest or one of the largest sector in food production and aquaculture is the fastest um, aquaculture production sector in food security. So since um, aquaculture, in aquaculture the feed is the largest component in the total production costs, no? Ito yung pinakamalaking gastusin kapag you, you engaged in aquaculture um, business, no? Feed is the largest component. Ito yung pinakamahal na parte ng mga expenses when you engage with aquaculture operations. So, in this is where the fish nutrition comes in, no? Because uh, fish nutrition basically aims to improve the feed composition and the feed efficiency. So when we say improve the feed composition and feed efficiency, we mean to say that there will there will be a higher fish production, a lower feed cost, and a low waste production, and a decreased nutrient load. So these all of these four will be addressed if we practice the sustainable manner of uh, fish nutrition. So there, we will have a higher production or higher fish production it will also give us the lower feed cost because most of the feed components will really be assimilated by the aquatic organisms instead of being um, leached in the aquatic environment and we will have a low waste production Ma minimize yung mga um, environmental toxic release natin from the aquaculture environment and we will have a decreased nutrient load no? kasi, kasi nga um, we will we, we are aiming to produce a uh, more palatable type of feeds, right? So these are all the functions or the important objectives of the, the fish nutrition. Now, um, in, in, since I told you earlier that the feeds is the most um, high cost or is it, it is the highest for, um, form of cost in the total production or the total aquaculture operations. Now, uh, the feeds basically has to have the essential nutrients. No, It has to have the proteins, the adequate proteins, adequate level of lipids, and adequate levels of carbohydrates, energy, vitamins, and minerals. Later on, I'm planning to have a virtual reporting in each one of these um, through uh, Google Meet so perhaps one of you or um, some of you will will be reporting on this one right so what are the functions of these essential nutrients basically the functions of these essential nutrients are for growth 
for tissue repair and maintenance, for regulations of body functions, and also to maintain health of the aquatic organisms. So, more specifically, each of one of these essential nutrients has a specific functions. No? Later on, you will um, understand, you will discover what are the specific functions of proteins, how is lipids will benefit to the aquatic organism, and what is the function of the carbohydrates, and what are energy what energy are for no and vitamins and minerals as well how does it protect our aquatic organisms so these are all the functions of our essential nutrients that are that has to be there or that has to be in place in our aquaculture diets so this is basically one of the major components of our discussions here now um uh right now, allow also me to, to uh, show you this figure. This is some of the basic fundamentals in the principles of aquaculture. No? We have here the different culture systems. Uh, the culture systems with regards to the area. No? The area for a certain individual for in extensive farming is larger. The semi-intensive is a bit larger and the intensive one is more narrower. No? Mas maliit yung sa intensive farming. Mas maliit yung uh, uh, total space for the intensive farming. And with regards, in comparison to the feeding inputs, there will have a higher uh, feed inputs to the intensive um, aquaculture culture systems and a little bit on the extensive or more or less nothing in the extensive farming because mostly um, aquaculture species being cultivated in extensive culture systems have no feed or no artificial feed inputs. They just rely on natural natural feeds that are growing in the pond, no, like uh, mga lumot and uh, some sort of other things as a natural food. So this is I hope this this is clear, no. Um, this is inversely proportional. As you increase the total area of a certain species being cultivated, you also um, increase or decrease the feed inputs, right? And this is more um, a more comprehensive presentation on the relationship between the culture system and the aquaculture management. No, uh, the extensive is basically um, lower stacking density. No, lower stacking density. They just widely uh, rely on the natural food organisms, and they do basically do not uh, be provided with artificial feeds. And uh, same intensive basically will have a medium stacking density, medium uh, reliant to natural food organisms, and um, medium uh, supplemental feeding of artificial feeds. Whereas the extensive aquaculture basically will have the highest stacking density among the three and uh, will basically not rely on the natural food organisms and will have a higher feed inputs or, or artificial feed inputs. So this is the, basically the relationship between the culture system and uh, feeding or aquaculture management. Right? Now, talking about the artificial feeds so artificial feeds basically um, has to be in in a more appropriate and a more balanced and a more adequate no because if we just we are just giving um, feeds to our aquatic organisms meaning to say we are practicing the improper manner of giving feeds to the aquaculture organisms we are just wasting our uh, feeds no there is this comparison no? when we give a uh, nutritionally balanced diet and we practice adequate feeding when we say adequate meaning to say we are calculating the amount of feed that we are giving and the the type of feed that we are giving is also a ba balanced feed meaning to say it it meets the uh, nutritional requirement of a certain species being cultivated meaning to say it has a specific um, content of proteins, uh, carbohydrates, energy, lipids, and uh, vitamins and minerals. So if we practice this one, it basically improves the feed conversion efficiency of the organisms. 
and it will have a lower production cost and reduce environmental degradation. It, it will also have to maximize the fish production and profitability. This is basically the principle of a balanced diet. No, if we if we are giving the balanced diet to our organisms and we if we practice adequate feeding, we we will surely meet these principles or these out outcomes. And however, if we uh, give our organisms inappropriate feeds, uh, siguro we are just giving them um, conventional feed stuffs. More or less, your culture will have a disease outbreaks, poor growth, and a higher mortality. So technically, it will have a negative effect to our aquaculture is uh, aquaculture organisms if we practice um, of if we are giving them inappropriate diets, right? So I hope that's clear. Now, um, this is the basic principles of effective fish nutrition and feeding. So in when we say basic principles of effective fish nutrition and feeding, we must um, first understand the nutrient requirements of our organisms, the feeding habit of our cultured organisms, as well as the feeding behavior, and the ability of the organism to digest nutrients and the ability to utilize essential nutrients. So these are all the basic principles of effective uh, fish nutrition. Ito yun sila lahat. If you do not know these principles of your of the species you are cultivating, basically you are uh, just going to nowhere, no? More or less you are just wasting the feeds that you are giving to them, right? So these are the five essential uh, principles for effective fish nutrition and feeding, right? Now, in, in aquaculture diets or the artificial diets, it must first, these are the three fundamental principles, it must satisfy the nutrient requirements of the cultured species in terms of protein, essential amino acids, lipids, and essential fatty acids as well as vitamins, minerals, and energy. So basically, uh, it has to meet the, the requirements of a certain species. Secondly, the quality of feed will ultimately depend on the level of available nutrients for fish. So, so basically, um, each of, of the certain species will require specific levels of nutrients. No, may may specific crude protein, crude uh, fat. Yun sila na kailangan for their artificial diets because uh, tinatawag nga natin silang essential kasi. Essential meaning to say, these are nutrients that cannot be synthesized by our organisms. So it has to be provided through feeds, right? So number three, as a principle in our aquaculture or artificial aquaculture diets, um, fish eat to satisfy their energy nutrient requirement. The energy value of the feed will affect its efficiency. So basically, um, as I've said earlier, there will be a specific requirement for a specific fish that, that basically uh, gives them the optimum growth, the optimum protection, the optimum um, reproduction, and etc. Cetera, et cetera. So talking about this one, so I, I've been mentioning about the nutrient requirements of a specific species. This, this is basically a comparison between the protein requirements of the omnivore and herbivore and the carnivore species. So for those omnivore species like bangus and tilapia, and uh, basically it, they will they will have to require higher protein requirements. No, must must higher in protein requirements. Nila. Unlike carnivorous species, they require protein uh, the lower protein requirements. No, this is according to the SIFTEC literatures. Right? So, again, omnivorous and carnivorous species will have a higher protein requirements. Carnivorous species will have lower protein requirements, such that of the grouper and sea bass. Right? Now, let's proceed to this one, the feed development. So, in, in aquaculture, uh, there is a continuous investigation on the methods to improve the quality of raw materials, improve the redu uh, or reduce the feed cost and improve the feeding management in the farm. So, uh, meaning to say, walang walang uh, walang end, uh, walang 
walang hangganan ang pag, pag develop ng feeds. In fact, there are different uh, new market products in the market including the attractants. Ito yung uh, mas mas mabango for the different aquaculture species. There are different binders that basically prevents the feed from leaching and there are different growth promoters. In fact, uh, the trend nowadays basically on the alternative growth promoters, no? ng AGP or uh, yeah AGP alternative load promoters like um, probiotics uh, ascorbic I mean organic acids and many others right so there when when um, why am I mentioning this because I as I've said there is a continuous investigation of, of the methods to promote to improve the quality of raw materials being used for feeding and reduce the feed cost and also improve the feeding management in the farm. However, um, these attractants, binders, and growth promoters, however, the new feed additives are constantly being reduced without proper evaluation of their efficiency. Thus, caution must be exercised in using them in aqua feeds. So meaning to say, uh, it has to be validated, it has to be um, supported with evidences the researches that is being done in the laboratory should be expanded extended to the aquaculture farms in order for us to see the actual effect on the larger scale on the practical scale so it has to be validated now uh, because most uh, nowadays basically the scientists develop this and uh, found out that that is uh, basically uh, beneficial to organism but up to that level lang hindi na sila nagtitest into um, larger scale hindi na nila tinitest into um, parang practical practices no? now feed manufacturing should ensure the nutrient composition is maintained and anti-nutrient factors are eliminated no? like for example yung tate uh, they made sure that all of the nutrient uh, proximate composition of their feeds are reflected in the sack or in the product itself. Feed quality control must start from the ingredient selection and continue through processing, storage, and use in the farms. No, hindi nag uh, hindi nag stop yung pag control ng feed quality from feed selection lang or selection of the ingredients lang. It has to be also maintained through the feed processing. It has to be um, parang uh, hygienic yung practices natin and then also yung storage natin it has to be a lower humidity and uh, up to the use in the farms no? yung distribution ng farm I mean yung distribution of feeds natin yung feeding practices natin it has to be um, environmentally friendly right so this is basically on the feed development and then uh, significance of proper feeding practices now how significant is proper feeding practices no? because if we compare say for example uh, one aquaculture technician basically uh, just giving the aquaculture species in ad libitum manner when we say ad libitum meaning to say uh, we are you are giving the fish feeds into satiation no? until satisfaction yung ano natin yung, yung feed um, re feeding rate natin Whereas, if you um, practice the feed, proper feeding practice, it has also have a beneficial effect. No? Now, what is the significance of proper feeding practice? A good quality of nutri and nutritionally adequate feed can be ineffective unless proper feeding practice are used. No? This is highlighted because it is not um, given, no? it is not an assurance that once you have a nutritionally adequate feed and a good quality feed it will directly have a good beneficial effect to aquatic organisms it will also have an ineffective effect to aquatic organisms if you use um, improper feeding practices so it has to have a proper feeding practice it for it to give its optimum effect to the aquatic organisms Emphasis must also be given to good feeding management and improve the feed performance. No, no. Uh, when we say proper feeding practice, it has to come with good feeding management. No, 
and improve feed performance of the organism it's, itself. And effective feeding management requires answers to the questions what, how much, when, how often, where, and uh, wh where to feed the fa fish. So basically, as I've mentioned earlier, yung mga fundamental principles of uh, proper feeding natin kanina, basically, it, ito yung tinatawag natin na uh, yung kanina na understanding on the nutrient requirement of the fish, understanding the feeding behavior of the fish. So this basically answers those questions, no? What or what feed to be given to the fish and how much feed is to be given and when do you feed them? How often do you feed them? It will it be twice a day, thrice a day or once a day? Where where where, where uh, which part of the pond you will be giving them or which part of the cage will you be giving to them? And um some more questions that are essential to the proper feeding practice, right? So basically, it answers all of these questions. The feeding regime used to match the feeding behavior and digestive cycle of the fish in order to maximize the feed utilization. Any reduction in uh, food storage stage will have an impact on the fish production cost and the quality of the culture environment. So basically, again, the feeding regime is very important to in order for you to have uh, beneficial effect to your good quality and nutritionally adequate feed. No, it is not again, it is not guaranteed that if you have a good quality and nutritionally adequate feed, it will directly have a beneficial effect to your organisms. It will sometimes be ineffective, especially if you are practicing improper feeding practice, right? So, those no, because more or less, uh. Karamihan, uh, if you are giving them unlimited feed supply, it will have a beneficial or harmful effect to our environment. Now, talking about the harmful effect to the environment, um, these are basically the reason why we are uh, practicing the proper feeding regime, proper feeding management. No, Because of the intensification of aquaculture, meaning to say intensification, meaning there are very... Uh, vast amount of inputs, large amounts of inputs, uh, mechanical aeration, artificial feeds, um, ano pa, yung mga probiotics, mga antibiotics, and mga water treatment, and etc. etc. It has lead to the non sustainable aquaculture practice. And it has uh, basically gives environmental pollutions brought about by nutrition, phosphorus, nitrogen, and hydrogen sulfide present in the feed itself. So, we must uh, not let this happen. No? It, uh, it has to be, uh, our feeds to be, has to be stable and it has to be in a proper amount. Kasi kapag uh, marami masyado, and there will be a higher tendency that this that these feeds will not be eaten by the organisms but instead, they will be, what do you call this? They will be leached into the aquatic environment that will have a harmful effect to the aquatic environment itself. Right? Now, here are some of the farm fish wastes. It is classified into two, the solid matters and the dissolved matters. The solid matters involves or includes uneaten food, feces, and colonizing bacteria. So these are all uh, farm wastes, solid matter farm wastes. While the dissolved matter, which is uh, much more uh, harmful to the environment, are ammonia, urea, carbon dioxide, phosphorus, and um, hydrogen sulfide. These are all dissolved matter, which basically will be addressed if you practice yung tinatawag natin na IMTA. I don't know if you have heard of that. IMTA, meaning to say the Integrated Multitrophic Aquaculture. So, sa integrated multitrophic aquaculture, ito yung the utilization of the different uh, trophic levels in culturing organism. You have there the fin fish, you have the bivalves, you have the crustaceans, you have the autotrophic organisms, yung mga seaweeds. In order for the waste to be recycled from one trophic to the other trophic levels. So, later on siguro we will discuss further on what is integrated multitrophic aquaculture. And also, uh, you could also watch 
my video on YouTube, the classifications on aquaculture I have discussed there, the IMTA. No? Ang IMTA is, again, one classification of aquaculture practice. So, you can search in this YouTube channel, yung class aquaculture types of culture systems na YouTube video. And then, uh, here are some major considerations in the feed formulation for sustainable aquaculture. No? In the tawag natin na sustainable aquaculture, meaning to say we are practicing, um, meaning to say we are practicing sustainable practices or sustainable manner, sustainable methods in aquaculture. So, here are major considerations. First, phosphorus discharge in pond effluent is influenced by the level of bioavailability of the phosphorus in the feed. Secondly, a better understanding of the factors involved in partitioning of the phosphorus in various fractions of the pond effluent will result in a better pond management. So that's second. Third is, digestible pond ingredients should be used to reduce organic waste from the feeds. Greater assimilation of the feed nutrients by the fish improves the efficiency and reduce aquaculture waste. So again, selection of the of the um, aquaculture feed ingredients is a must and then fourth is pellet water stability should improve by using efficient diet binders and proper techniques in pelleting the feeds so there's there are, uh, as i said earlier there are different new products that is available in the market like yung mga binders in order for your feeds to be more stable in the water to prevent the leaching of the feed so there are also techniques to improve or enhance the proper uh, pelleting of the feeds no yung mga techniques that are that are uh, science based techniques and then fifth is uneaten feeds at the bottom of the pan will promote rapid water quality degradation of course this is very basic principle of the sustainable aquaculture kapag you are giving them too much feed in in the aquaculture system most of these feeds will just settle down below the bottom of the pond and then somehow it will degrade and use up the oxygen in the water and somehow compete the oxygen of the aquaculture species and therefore there is now a limited supply of oxygen in water and and so it will somehow result to fish kill in in and a worst case scenario no so we are um, we are preventing that to happen and then greater use of alternative protein sources of fish meals in aqua feeds should be encouraged through continuous and improved research and then uh, again uh, as i've said earlier there are more advanced methods or more advanced alternative fish meals or alternative protein sources of fish meals because fish meals as they say are are quite expensive no there are now different alternatives like for example the utilization of indigenous products uh, utilization of different uh, locally available uh, sources of proteins like mga leaves mga leaves ikilipi leaves mga cassava and then some uh, some are, are using organic acids and so on and so forth and then exotic feed ingredients which contain a known growth inhibitor should be avoided unless methods are available to max to minimize or eliminate these factors in in the finished feeds no kasi kadalasan ng mga researches ngayon na trend is that they are using different uh, feed ingredients without knowing that these ingredients has unknown growth inhibitors no the, there are different um types of growth inhibitors that basically um restrain the growth of the organisms no so it has to be known this inhibit growth inhibitors should be known and the manufacturing practice or the processing practice should be known as well in order to get rid of this growth inhibitors before using this into one of our basal diet or yung tinatawag natin na uh, primary ingredient to our diets right so these are all the major considerations the feed formulation for sustainable aquaculture if you use this or if we consider this basically we will have a most more like um, adequate 
nutrient for our aquaculture species. Now, talking about sustainable um, aquaculture, sustainable approaches in fish nutrition. These are basically the basic principles of sustainable approaches in fish nutrition. First, there's a need to reduce the feed cost because, as I've said in the very first place, feed is the very high, uh, the highest feed cost in the aquaculture operation. So, there is a need to reduce the feed cost. And the search for alternative fish meal and fish biomass for aquaculture is still on. Uh, no, parang hindi pa nag, nag uh, hinto yung uh, the search for alternative fish meal and fish biomass for aquaculture. And then third, the greater use of supplementary feeds and supplemental feeding systems. There should be uh, supplemental feeding, you know, instead of just relying on the artificial feed itself. It should be a great uh, taken into consideration that there there should be uh, more balanced supplementary feeding and supplemental feeding systems, and it should have an integration of the feed development and feeding management practices with environmental awareness. No, um, the, the the knowledge between the feeding development and the knowledge in science with regards to the ecological consideration should be taken into consideration no parang uh, we are not just producing as i've said earlier in the very first place the sgd number 12 is basically producing food in a very sustainable manner we are not just producing food and harming the environment but we are producing food in very sustainable environmentally friendly manner so i hope everyone have stayed tuned up to this moment this is the end of module one and uh, thank you again for watching this video and uh, please subscribe for more future videos to be posted in relation to fish nutrition and some others like uh, fishing grounds aquaculture and post harvest and some other basic principles in the fish uh, fisheries course right so again thank you very much for joining this is our uh, the introduction to nutrition in tropical aquaculture so thank you for for joining and thank you for watching this video at this very end i hope to see you again in the next video